Hello guys, welcome back to Dark Souls 3. I actually died several times trying to get back to where I was here to uh, resume my recording of this beautiful area. Uh, but that is beside the point because we are here now. And now we're going to fuck this guy up. Where is he? There he is. I don't know how he aggroed me here, but not last time. Oh god. Not again. Not again. Okay. We're good. <laughs> okay. I didn't panic that time, so I think that's what saved me. Um, now down here uh, is an evangelist. And we're gonna kill him. Uh, cause why the fuck not? She's just sort of mumbling to herself. I don't know what the hell she's doing. And now she's dead. And for killing her, we get Doris's gnawing. I have... I don't actually know what that does. Summons a great... Insect swarm to feast on foes. Um, okay. That sounds interesting. I wonder if it has a lifesteal effect, because um, if it doesn't have a lifesteal effect, then it might not be that good of a spell. That's all I'm going to say. Now we'll just make our way back up here and get this bonfire. <coughs> Like I was trying to get in the last episode. Um, I already took the liberty of clearing out this whole area, obviously. I wasn't about to... Drop down back over there. Without at least clearing out the enemies first. Now, over there is a couple of interesting items. Um, we're definitely going to get those items, but not right this moment because right over here we can enter this little cathedral and here we'll have ourselves another bonfire oh Henri's here so we didn't fail her quest line after all that's good I was worried that we had oh I thought it might be you good to see you I never managed to find Horus, but my duty must be done, even alone, as an unkindled Lord Seeker. For the children I knew, bless their souls. We all have our reasons, don't we? Ah, you are brave indeed, to face your duty alone. I would do well to learn from you. May the flames guide your way. Yeah. So, this part... A proof of a Conquer kept. That's another Covenant item for a PvP Covenant. Obviously, we won't be doing any of that stuff, though. But yes, once Henri comes here, uh, basically, the next step... Um, will be dependent on whether or not you kill a certain NPC. And the NPC right he is right here. This person right here is an NPC. Now, he's using the Chameleon spell, which is a spell that lets you turn yourself into an object from the level that you're in. Um, how you would ever know this is here, I don't know. Uh, probably from like a strategy guide or something um, because this is not a developer message this is just a player message so I guess if you're playing online you could tell that this is here but if you're playing offline you would have no way of knowing this is here unless you knew about it beforehand so I think for the purposes of my playthrough I am going to kill this Yeah, and then you can get the chameleon spell. 
Um, but basically, um, if you leave that NPC alive, you'll be able to get the hollowing ending, which will allow you to marry Henri in some sort of weird sacrificial ritual. Um, but if you choose to kill that NPC, then you can just continue Henri's questline the normal way. And then once it's all said and done, um, she will eventually go hollow and become hostile to you. But that is simply, you know, all good things must come to an end. Anyway, coming out here, to get to the next part of this level, assuming we're not pushed off the cliff by this asshole. <laughs> right over here, we can get another few good items, so we should definitely do that. Also, um, for no particular reason, we should also be in ember embered form when we come over here. Oh no, we're being invaded by Creighton the Wanderer. <laughs> yeah, um, if you're in Embered form when you come around this area, you will be invaded by him. Um, and if you kill him here, you'll be able to get his weapon, which is pretty good. So I definitely recommend you do that. Just be careful. Uh, also behind this gravestone, you can get yourself another undead bone shard. So don't forget that too. That's pretty helpful. Oh god. This guy is very aggressive towards me right now. I don't know why. Maybe he's just pissed off that I cheesed him in the last episode. Whatever, I'll cheese you again. I'll cheese you again. I don't give a shit. Come here. I have to wait for my stamina. I have to wait for my stamina. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, he's trying to halt our healing. <laughs> He's like an actual, like, player invader. What the fuck was that aim? And casting, uh, Chaos Bed Vestiges actually requires a lot of stamina. I did not realize that. Also, he keeps healing himself. I don't know how he keeps healing himself. He's out of Estus. Or he's supposed to be out of Estus. And there you go. You can get Creighton the Wanderer's Dragon Slayer Axe. That axe has lightning damage on it, as you can see. And it also has a decent amount of strength scaling once you upgraded it enough, I believe. Once you get it maxed out, I believe it gets a C scaling in strength. Or a B scaling, I don't remember which. But... It is a pretty solid weapon. The Dragon Slayer Axe is actually the op most optimal weapon for you to... One of the most optimal weapons for you to have for a soul level 1 run in this game. It would be very nice if it would stop attacking me every two seconds. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die to dogs that won't stop attacking me. Okay. How are you still alive? Okay. <laughs> that was the hardest enemy I've fought in this area yet. It literally took all of my health with, like, three or four attacks. Normally I'm able to two-shot these dogs by this point in the game, but I think because we're using a magic longsword, it's probably the fact that those dogs just resist the magic damage. But anyway, coming on in here, this is a very dark part of the game. I apologize if this doesn't render well on YouTube. Um, but this little dark room, this little dark room here has a lot of useful items in it. So I'm gonna try to get some of those items. Um, not these blue bug, blue bug pellets. Those are not very useful for us. That will give us magic resistance temporarily. But that's about it.
isn't really a point to killing all these enemies. They don't really give you that many souls. I'm only killing them so I don't get snuck up on, stabbed in the back. Because they will do that to you. Alright. What the fuck? Jesus. Alright. Now over here, by these barrels, you can find a ladder. Um, and then you can get up onto these like little beams above the room and get some more items for yourself. So that's another thing that I recommend you do, because there are some useful stuff up here. Oh, cool, he fell down. Now if you come over here, there will be a lower platform with a chest on it right down there. You can probably see it. Um, you want to drop down onto that platform and you can reach the chest pretty easily. And there you'll find Yorshka's spear, which I believe is a sp obviously a spear weapon. Um, it is a faith scaling spear weapon that Huh. Alright. So it's a faith scaling spear weapon that will basically sap the enemy's FP. Although, I don't think um, enemies in this game have FP value, so that might only work in PvP. At least that aspect of the weapon might only work in PvP. Anyway, you can come out through this window here and drop on down. Um, in New Game Plus, there's actually a ring up here that you can get. Which makes dropping onto this cliff uh, worth doing. But I guess in regular New Game, there isn't really a point. Although, I guess you could drop down here and get that item. Uh, sure, why not? We're going to take a lot of fall damage, so... Oh, never mind, not that much fall damage. And this guy has so many soul mass. Huh. And a blood gem. As you might imagine, a blood gem will add bleed damage to a weapon you infuse it with. And it's pretty useful. That was a weird voice crack. <laughs> Now, in one of these little nooks here, there will be a hidden wall. And just past that hidden wall, you can find yourself some useful stuff. Like this. I can definitely tell that the crystal lizards are more resistant to my magic damage, my magic longsword. Alright, now uh, there's really a point to coming up here, this just leads back into the dark room, it's just another way to leave the dark room, but if you want to exit out through that way, you can get some more items, so I'd definitely recommend you do that. Um, we got some more items over here, but there's a new enemy type. Um, that enemy basically reminds me of the girl from The Ring, how it has very long, draped over black hair, except it's more of like a demon creature because it has like a million fucking legs, like a spider woman or something. It's very creepy. But, uh, the enemies in this area are very cool. I like the enemy design in this area. Um, over here you can find a very, very good miracle. If you are playing Miracle Build, this is a good miracle to get. Great heal. This is basically one of the best, if not the best, healing spell that you can get in this game. It will restore pretty much all of your HP... Or almost all of your HP, depending on how much vigor you have. Um, it's it's pretty much like just as effective as a plus 10 Estus Flask. So, yeah. Definitely worth getting. 
Now, in here is where we need to go for the rest of Eartho of the Boreal Valley. But if we come over here to this doorway, we can get ourselves another bonfire. And I recommend you get this bonfire before you go through that little tunnel. Um, so that way, if you die, you won't have to run all the way back from the church. Because that can be kind of annoying. Anyway, let's continue through here, this little channel of water leading through some sewer system. Right into some nightmare fuel. With these spider women all over the place. Now, another thing about these ring-looking women Another thing about these things is that they can also inflict toxic on you um, if they grab you. So watch out for that. Oh, never mind. If they spit at you, they can inflict toxic. Alright. Now, gr now, Gray Rat, back at our Firelink Shrine, does have another quest line in Irithil of the Boreal Valley. Um, which we forgot to send him on a pillaging run for. Um, if you fail his quest line in Irithil, um, his corpse can be found right in there, in that pit of spider women. Um, however,. You will be able to get the ashes from his body, so um, if you give his ashes to the merchant lady back in Firelink, um, then the merchant lady can sell uh, Grey Rat's stock after he dies. But you will still not be able to get any of his new stock if he dies, so that's another thing you should be careful about. Now this, this is looking very familiar, um, if you've played Dark Souls 1, you'll notice this is obviously Guinevere, and these enemies are Silver Knights. Just like them Silver Knight archers from Dark Souls 1, you get pushed around by their gigantic arrows. Only in this game, the Silver Knight's AI is much better, and they're actually fun to fight. Yeah, so that's Guinevere, you can see there. Um, right over here, I think you can see Nashandra. Yep, that's Nashandra from Dark Souls 2. So yeah, this, this whole little room here is like a nice little callback to the previous Dark Souls games. I, I very much like it. And you can actually come upstairs here and fight that Silver Knight Archer. As well as get a few more useful items. So we will try to get those items. I do believe these Silver Knights can actually drop their armor pieces too. So I'm surprised we haven't seen at least like one piece yet. Oh, inflicted frostbite on him. You can tell because he lost a little bit of his health. I don't know if Frostbite will do anything to normal enemies in this game. I know that Frostbite can be very useful in PvP, but I don't know if it'll affect regular enemies. Because, as far as I'm aware, I don't see any difference when you inflict an enemy with Frostbite, other than the fact that you chip away a little of their health. I don't think it slows their attack speed or anything. Now up here you can get the Leo Ring, very useful. Smo's Great Hammer, another callback to Dark Souls 1. And a Divine Blessing. Um, that Leo Ring is useful. Um, it basically makes it so... 
It basically, it basically makes it so your weapon will do more damage with a thrust attack if an enemy is in the middle of doing an attack. So, so if an enemy is in the middle of attacking you and you thrust at it and you hit it with thrust damage in the middle of its attack, that ring will enable you to do more damage with attacks like that. So it's kind of handy for that purpose, although um, in my experience... It has only really ever been useful with, like, rapiers and spear weapons. Or really, any any weapon that does, like, thrust damage will work with it. But rapiers and spears tend to be the most effective with it that I've found. Now, we are getting invaded here by another NPC invader. Which is kind of bad because we've also aggroed these dog enemies. And I would have liked to kill some of these dog enemies before fighting this guy. Oh god. I really don't want to die here. Okay. The annoying ass dogs from hell are dead. Now we get to fight Londor Paleshade. Um, this is honestly one of the easiest NPC invaders in the game. He will spawn dark sorcery to hit you with. And they will chase after you, like the pursuers. But, um... As for, like, fighting this guy, yeah, he's pretty easy. He is obviously resistant to magic damage, but... He is easy enough to take care of. So we'll just take care of him real quick here. I'm gonna try to make sure he can't heal himself, because... How the fuck did you get... Th okay. <laughs> For killing him, we'll get Mannequin Claws. That's another weapon, sort of a callback to Dark Souls 2 again. I don't know how he, like, went through my Chaos Bed Vestiges and took no damage. That was weird. Maybe he, like, blocked it with his claws or something. I didn't know you could do that. But anyway. <clears throat> yeah, coming up through here. We can kill some more of these annoying guys. But, um, careful as you are coming back up here because... As you come up here, more dog enemies will spawn. And, um, yeah. As you can obviously tell, these dog enemies are absolutely ridiculous. Oh, nice. We staggered them. <laughs> that was pretty much the best case scenario. Oh, there's another dog here. We're just going to take care of him. Brute force it. Brute force it. Now, right in here, you'll want to take this elevator. Um, because as soon as you do, and as soon as you open this gate, you'll be back at a shortcut. Right up there is where the cathedral is. So, if you die, you can just come back here, and you won't have to run all the way back around again. So, this is a nice little shortcut. One of the most useful shortcuts in this game, honestly, since there are so many difficult enemies in between here and there. But yeah, go ahead and uh, kill these little dickheads up here, throwing little sorcery spells at you. Easy enough to take care of. Um, I don't think we will be able to fight the boss of this area in this episode. But we will definitely be able to get everything before the boss done. Unless we die. In which case, we might run out of time. Um, and if that happens, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna take care of everything and we'll just fight the boss anyway next time. There are a lot of invisible enemies in here. Um, if you are gonna get the loot in this room, I recommend you clear it out first because... Yeah, don't, don't assume that these guys will leave you alone just because they're sitting down. They will... 
I would not trust that for one second. Make sure you get every last one of them. And also be careful about breaking these pots. Uh, because these pots will inflict a large amount of frostbite on you. Um, if you let it settle on you for too long. And now right up here is the boss room. Um, we still have five minutes left in the episode, but honestly, I don't think five minutes is going to be enough time to do the boss of this area. So we will go ahead and save that for next time. And in the meantime, we will clear out this area and get all the items. So you guys can at least know what's useful to get in this area here. Pontiff Knight Armor, that's nice. Now, up here we can also summon Henri of Asora, and I believe over here you can also summon, um, yeah, another Black Hand Gothard, Gothard NPC. There's a player summon. Um, yeah, we're going to be summoning Henri for this fight, because I find that fighting this boss by myself is a little difficult, and I don't really want to subject myself to that. If I don't have to. But before any of that, we're going to come over here. And open this gate. Because this gate is another shortcut. After you come out here, boom. Right over there is the cathedral bonfire. So once again, you have another shortcut that leads pretty much directly to the boss. You don't even have to... Um, you don't even really have to worry about dying anymore. So everything that you are going, everything that you could really need to do is right here. And you will have to fight these fucking assholes. Right over here, you can get a lightning gem that'll put lightning on your weapon. Lightning's a pretty useful attribute. Generally speaking, lightning damage scales with faith. Um, and this is another hidden wall. You can break that, get a magic clutch ring. That's pretty useful for sorcery characters, I suppose. If you want to be more of a glass cannon. Um, because obviously putting on any of the clutch rings will drastically lower your physical damage absorption. But when you come up here and drop down here in the middle, you can get another ring. The Ring of the Sun's Firstborn. This ring is basically an upgrade of Morn's Ring in that it will gracefully it will <laughs> gracefully it will greatly boost your miracle damage. So if you are using a miracle build, that is a must. That ring will help you out very significantly. And yeah, um, now that that's all out of the way, it looks like we've explored everything there is to do here in Irithyll. All we've got left to do is fight the boss. And we will be doing that next time. But before we get ready to do it, we're going to spend the 60,000 souls we've accrued since we came to Irithyll. Also use all my soul items. Uh, I don't know why there's a use selected button. Why aren't they just one? I don't understand that. Come on, From Software. I know this game's like five years old or whatever, but come on. I'm pretty sure it's more than five years old, actually. <laughs> but now at least we can level up a little more. Um, wow, we could get straight to 25 Vigor. And I'm tempted to do this simply because we have been getting killed a lot lately. But I feel like that would be a grievous waste of level ups. So... I'll do this instead. This will give us a decent increase in damage with our Pyromancy Flame and a little bit more health. Farewell, 
And I believe our pyromancy flame will actually be useful for this boss fight. So... We'll give her some more ashes. Now she sells titanite shards. Normal titanite shards. For 800 souls each. Pretty good. Um, and yeah, uh, like I was saying in the last episode, you can actually buy Night Slayer Sorig's armor here. Um, it is a little expensive, probably like 20,000 souls in total. But it has very good defensive values and very high fire resistance. So I, if you're going for a build with like heavy armor set, then black iron armor is one of the best you can have. I definitely, rec I would definitely recommend that. Um, and now, ah, oh man, we still need one Titanite chunk to upgrade that. We're not going to be able to get another weapon upgrade, it seems. I think we will be able to reinforce our flame, though. Yes. Only once, though. <laughs> Alright. I think we're set for now, guys. Um, we can talk to Grey Rat and have him pillage an Irithyll. Uh, the problem is that since we didn't get patches, it's another NPC you can get. Um, I believe he is doomed to fail on this mission no matter what we do. Mm -hmm. So, I will send him to pillage. But I don't think he's going to make it back alive because we did not unlock the patches NPC, unfortunately. But anyway, um, I think that'll do it for this episode, guys. Um... Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next time, and we will be fighting the boss of Irithyll.